presentation is going to be about the intrusion arch mechanics with the use of rickets utility arch. Deep overbite correction is usually accomplished by several ways. We can do true incisor intrusion, we can do relative incisor intrusion, we can do molar extrusion, or we can combine several of them and accomplish our goal by simultaneous backward mandible rotation and incisor intrusion. Ricketts Utility Arch is made of continuous arch wire made of stainless steel and it has bypass portions which, which actually are intended to decrease the low deflection rate of the wire and the second purpose of that is, that is to put them a little bit away from the occlusal plane so that they don't get deflected by the forces of mastication. So this is how it looks in a sagittal direction and these are the bypassing portions which actually bypass the canine and premolar regions. When talking about the rickets utility arch I will always try to compare it to the one couple intrusion arch, the simplest intrusion arch that we have. The intrusion activation is done the same way, exactly the same way as we do it in the one couple intrusion arch is by placing the tip back band mesial to the molar tube here. This is how it looks with the bypassing portion and what do we have here? If we go back and remember and try to recall how the intrusion arch is activated, so we will go back here and we will try to imagine the position of the center of resistance of the lower incisors. The way we can activate the simplest intrusion arch, one couple intrusion arch, is that we can tie them exactly at the location of the center of resistance, thus we will get the true incisor intrusion, or we can tie it somewhere a little bit facially to the position of the center of resistance, thus we will get the incisors, facial crown and lingual root inclination. The same way, it can work the same way with this arch, but the only the only difference and the main difference is that the intrusion arch by rickets is engaged into incisor brackets in most of the cases, not, not in 100% of cases, but in most of the cases what is done is that this intrusion arch is intended to be engaged into the incisor brackets. Thus, this is inevitable that we get the, that facial crown torque with the lingual, with the lingual root torque because of the location of the point of force application far facially to the center of resistance. The second main difference between the one couple intrusion arch and the utility arch by Ricketts lies in the engagement of the arch wire into the incisor bracket. So what we have here is the moment of couple generated by insertion of the arch wire into the molar tube. The moment of couple generates equilibrium forces which tend to extrude the molar and intrude the incisors. When we put the arch wire into the incisor bracket, there is a second pair of forces generated, which creates the moment of couple, which is less than that on the molar, but still, it creates its own equilibrium forces, which tend to alter those that already exist on the molar and on the incisor. Central resistance of the lower incisor segment lies just behind the central incisors at the level of their root apices here. Let's talk about the sequence of moment and forces that tend to be created uh, in this activation. So what do we have? During, due to engagement of the wire into the molar tube, what we get again is the moment of couple here at the molar, which tends to tip the molar crown distally and the roots in a mesial direction. This moment of couple, by definition, has to create something in equilibrium. So it creates the equal pair of forces, which tend to act in the vertical direction. So these forces are the extrusion force on the molar, and this is the intrusion force somewhere on the lower incisor. What ha what's happening next is that because the arch wire is located just facially to the center of resistance here, there is a moment of force. So this, the force acting on the incisors at this point is the intrusion force generated by the moment of couple. But this force, because the wire is engaged into the bracket, which is facially to the center of the resistance, this force, uh, consequently, it creates the moment of force on incisors. This moment of force tends to 
rotate the crowns of the lower incisors facially and the roots lingually. Up till now we have we have talked about the moments and forces that are, that are generated by, by, by intrusion mechanics, which is very close to what is happening on one couple of intrusion arch. What we're going to talk next is the moment of couple which is generated by the engagement of the incisors into the incisor bracket. The moment of couple generated on the incisor bracket, which is drawn here, can either alter those existing forces on the molar and the incisor itself. It can either complement or decrease the amount of forces, depending on which activation we put here. So if we imagine this bracket in a profile and the wire engaged into the bracket, it creates torsion inside the incisor bracket, which tends to create that moment of couple itself. So let's talk in more detail about what's happening and how can we activate it. There are two ways we can activate the arch wire here in the incisor bracket. The first thing that we can do is we can is we can put the crown lingual torque so we can put the torsion inside the arch wire so that there will be an activation for crown lingual torque and a roots going to go in a more facial direction. What this creates, this is a moment of couple which is created by the torsion of the arch wire inside the, inside the incisor bracket and what, what, how it's gonna behave is that it's gonna behave the same way as the pair, as the moment of couple on the molars, although it is a little bit less in, in its amount. So it's gonna cause incisor crown to tip distally and, and the roots to tip facially. And what it's gonna do, it's, it's gonna increase the amount of intrusion force. So we will get the intrusion double with the extrusion doubled as well. So let's recall what's gonna happen. So by definition, due to the tip back activation, it's solely due to the tip back activation, we get the molar crown distal root mesial tipping, we get molar extrusion, we get incisor intrusion, and because the force is applied facially to the center of resistance, we get that moment of force that causes the incisor crown to tip facially in a facial direction while the root is tipped in a, in a lingual direction. By changing the activation of the wire engaged into the bracket by either placing a crown lingual torque or a crown facial torque, we can alter uh, what's happening, what was happening by definition. So we have talked about what's happening when we put the uh, the crown lingual torque. Uh, opposite to that, if we put the crown facial torque, if we if we put the torsion so that the wire will will further cause the incisor facial tipping, what we get is that these forces and these moments, the whole system will work as the V band. So the, it, will, it will try to, to cancel those intrusion and extrusion forces while it's going to maintain the moments that cause molar to tip distally and incisor to tip facially. So if we put further incisor facial crown torque, what's gonna happen, it's, it will not cancel the extrusion and intrusion force totally, but it will significantly decrease. So this is how we can influence the amount of intrusion and extrusion forces, and this is how we can further increase them by placing the lingual crown torque. In this video, we talked about the main system of activation of forces and moments that tend to take place during the utility rickets arch activation, and we have touched on the ways we can influence the incisor arch wire engagement and the way we can influence the overall forces by differentiating the torsion in the incisor brackets. So stay tuned and look for the next video where we're going to talk about other effects of utility arches and their advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm.